Hello everyone. Welcome to lab session 1. In this lab session we are going to implement basic video processing system using test patterns generator. Xilinx provides a test patterns generator IP core which is convenient for generation of test patterns for video system bring up, evaluation and debug. So now let's get started. As you can see we have already started a Vivaldo 2018.2. Now let's create a project. We are going to create a project. Our target system is a Zboard. Next, name it Lab1 DPZ. Select project location. In our case, uh, we're going to choose a uh, volume. Next, RTL project. We're not going to add any files. Target language is VHDL simulator mix. Next, we're also not going to add constraint right now, or we can add constraint later on. Next, we're going to select board. In the source box, we're going to search Jetboard. We're going to select Jetboard by Disneyland. Next, finish. Now the project has been created. We're going to design a basic block design system, block design system uh, for our video processing. Choose create block design. Uh, default design one name. Uh, you can keep it as it is or change as you like. Click OK. It's going to open diagram window. We can expand it. So our target is using test patterns generator and generate various test patterns. Test it with other video processing IPs. So we're going to require uh, different IPs here. All the IPs are already available through Xilinx. We can click the add IP button. First, we're going to require is a zinc processing system because we need to configure our Test patterns generator IP through SDK and uh, Zinc processing system or PS system will uh, command that TPZ. We're going to run block automation. Click OK. It is going to make some extra interfaces like fixed IO DDR. Click OK. Normally standard processor. After this, we're going to add uh, processor system reset. This will uh, be used to uh, generate uh, reset signals according to the input clock. Processor system reset. So, one of the things that you require to know during uh, or creating video processing system is the uh, requirement of pixel clock. So, as you should already know, pixel clock is the speed at which the pixels are transmitted so that a full frame of pixels fits within one refresh cycle. So, for 1080p, the required pixel clock is 148.5 megahertz. Similarly, for different uh, video resolutions, a different pixel clock is required. As our target uh, resolution is 1080p here, we're going to use uh, 148.5 uh, megahertz clock for all of our IPs. So our system will be running at 148.5 megahertz, but our zinc processing system is currently inputting a clock of 100 megahertz. As you can see, you're going to clock configuration. PL fabric clocks, uh, you, you can see requested frequency is 100 megahertz. So we're going to require clocking with that. You can see it here, 148.5 megahertz clock, but actually we will not get this frequency. As you can see, when we request 148.5 megahertz, you can see we get 142.85 megahertz. So we're going to keep it 100 megahertz and we're going to use the 100 megahertz clock to drive the clocking wizard, which will convert this 100 megahertz to 148.5 megahertz. So we're going to add clocking wizard. It will take some time. So the clocking wizard is added. Now we go inside the clocking wizard and set uh, the clock out to be 148.5 megahertz. So we go to output clocks, and here we request 148.5 megahertz frequency. We go, wait, enter. You can see we get 148.5 actual frequency through it. We go down, we do not require reset and locked interfaces. We untick them and click OK. Now we're going to connect half clock, clock zero of processing system to clocking and clocking wizard. And this clock out one to slowest sync clock for processor system reset. And we connect half clock reset zero yen to external reset union of Process system reset. So this process system reset will generate reset signals corresponding to this F clock clock zero. 
Now, after this, we'll require an AXI interconnect. AXI interconnect will be used to connect slave interfaces to master interfaces so that we can control slave interfaces through master interfaces. So, this AXI interconnect will only require one master interfaces. We're going to settings and for number of master interfaces, choose one. Uh, keep uh, other remaining settings as it is. Click OK. Now, let's add test patterns generator. You can see when we search, we get video test patterns generator. Add this. The test pattern generator connect the yes axis xi control input to the yum0 xi of xi interconnect and connect yum xi gp0 interface of processing system to the to the yes0 xi interface of xi interconnectors we generate the layout connect the uh, other ports like AP clock of video test generator to clocking wizard, AP reset yen to the peripheral air reset yen. One thing you should notice is that processor system reset has two reset signals, one for interconnect and one for peripherals. So we connect this interconnect reset yen to the A reset yen of interconnect. And this A reset yen is for the reset signal of this AXI interconnect. And this remaining Yes, zero and yum zero a reset in it will be connected to peripherals. So we can directly select these two ports using uh, control key and selecting and then dragging this to the peripheral reset in of processor system reset. Thus, we can uh, directly choose two interfaces connect at once. Now, let's select a clock, yes, zero a clock, and m zero a clock and connect this all three ports to clocking wizard. We generate the layout. Uh, we're going to connect YMAXI GPU A clock of processing system to clocking wizard again. Uh, you can see the run connection automation block is gone. Till now we have connected up to the video test pattern generator. After the video test pattern generator generates the video output we need it to display on our monitor or display device. For that we need another two IPs. One is AXI stream to video out. We source video out, we get AXI for stream to video out. This IP is required because it converts the AXI for stream that we get in our system and outputs to the video format that is required by the display system. So the video test pattern generator gives output in a AXI for stream format, which the AXI for stream to video out takes in in video. In interface and output outputs it as in the format required by the video device. We connect MXS video to video in, and this XF4 stream to video out requires a video timing information. And to generate that video timing information, we require another IP. It's called video timing controller. So this timing controller will generate timing signals for our video output based on. Uh, the resolution and video formats. So these are the options, and this video timing control can both generate and detect the timing signals. We are only going to require generation portion of this IP for now. We can use detection when we uh, include a input video source, and we have to output according to that input source uh, timing information. And we're going to untick uh, include XI for a light. Interface now. Let's go to default slash constant and here you can see uh, the options for video format in video mode There is already available presets our target video resolution for now is 1080p You can also use a custom video mode if you have all different details for your video output For now select 1080p and click ok Now we're going to connect video timing out to video timing in and so there are different clock enables and reset yen in video timing controllers. So in video timing control, we're going to connect clock to clocking wizard, reset yen, peripheral reset yen of uh, processor system reset, and we're going to drive this clock enable using constant of one. We're going to include constant IP 
this constant is going to drive our video timing controller clock enable signal continuously. Here constant width will be 1 and constant value will also be 1. We're also going to drive this constant to a clock enable of stream to video out and with IO out C. And the output side VTZ underscore C will be connected to Zen clock enable of video timing controller. Now there is this A clock will be connected to clocking wizard. A resetion will be to peripheral A resetion of processor system reset. We're going to regenerate our layout. Now, till now we have connected all these things required from generating uh, TPZ to the AXI4 stream video out. Now this AXI4 video stream out is required to connect it to the external interface. So our targeted external interface for now is VGA. So for VGA we'll require the video output data, atsync data and vsync data. Atsync and vsync are vertical sync and horizontal sync video data outputs. So we're going to expand video IO out and as you can see here with data 23 is to 10 this is our video data and with sync and with vsync we're going to make sync and vsync external let's select this port either you can right click and choose make external or you can directly say click the port and use shortcut control t this will make it external another we're going to require is slice so this Video data output is going to give us 24 bit output. We're going to slice it into four data width, four data bit widths for each color component that is RGB for blue, four bit data width, for red, four bit data width, and for green, four bit data width. We're going to add slice, and the slice we're going to copy it two more times, and we're going to connect it to the Video data. Now we're going to rename this for convenience of our use. Also, there you can see this when we change the name for this external ports or external interfaces, it will be easier for us to write it in the constraints. So we're going to rename with async to click external port properties name. We're going to rename it VGA. HS for horizontal sync and VGA VS vertical sync. We're also going to make this D outputs external for all the slices. Let's also rename this slice. This will rename VGA B for blue component. This one VGA Z for green component this one vza r for red company similarly the external ports will also name correspondingly vza b vza z vza r now it is name now we're going to the settings of this slice for blue component as you can see the d in width the width that is coming uh, data width is 24 that comes out from the stream to video out so we'll enter 24 and for blue component the d in that we're going to slice is from 19 bit to 16th bit so the bit width will automatically be converted to 4 the out width for g component is also 24 D in and for green component it is 11th bit to down to 8 bit, automatically 4 bit width. For red component 24, D in will be from 3 down to 0. So as you can see, okay. Now we're going to the address editor. As you can see here, the data on map slips are not mapped. For TPZ, we need to map its register so that our uh, zinc processing system can program the test pattern generator. We're going to click auto assign address so the reviewer will automatically assign the address required for this TPZ. 
as you can see the address has been assigned let's go back let's check all the settings video xi stream out as you can see we're going to leave it by default here it is automatically set for rgb and input component width set it you can also set it manually but if we set it auto it will uh, give the settings according to the video input that it is receiving through tpz so now we're going to regenerate the layout vgb is 19 down to 16 which is vgag it is 11 down to 8 all our slicing of the video components is correct now let's validate our design so validation is successful no errors now after this we require to add the constraints we go to the sources constraint right click add source so we're going to use uh, master constraints constraints that is provided by the disland or avnet you can download it from Disland's website or you can also it find in the sources of this lab project add files we have a store it's called zboard master xtc okay finish and let's open the constraints and let's edit it so as you can see we have renamed our vga ports external ports to vga b vga vga z vga r vga access and vga vs for horizontal sync and vertical sync so we're going to the constraints for these output ports in the master constraints file go to the vga output section you can see here uh, each section is given a name hdmi output similar there is vga output bank 33 so as you can see vga underscore b1 so here we're going to give the individual port package pin names to our ports name in the block design for the b component or blue component for of vga we have given vga b and you can see it is an array it has four bit the out width so it is starts from zero and ends to three so we're going to use the square bracket to denote that array number so vga b bracket zero similarly uh, vga b bracket one two so we're going to do this for all other components z0 z1 z2 z3 so vga g is for hs for horizontal sync uh, the name is same for our component 2 r bracket 0 bracket 1 r bracket 2 r bracket 3 so we have edited the constraints this much is only we need to make changes in the master constraint constraints we do not need to require to change anything other now save it go to the block diagram now let's generate the hardware we're going to generate the bitstream. stream save the block design select yes and okay so it will take some time from 10 to 15 minutes to generate the hardware and bt stream after uh, it generates the bt stream we're going to export our hardware to the sdk and we require to program the tpz correctly so that it can generate uh, the test pattern that we need so we're going to wait for some time and then we'll resume when the bt stream is generated okay as you can see here is some error this is just uh, the error because we forget to wrap our design we cannot just uh, generate the British stream for our from our block design we need to wrap it uh, in a SDL wrapper so that uh, it can uh, synthesize and implement we're going to the sources select design right click create as your wrapper and let Vado man manage the wrapper and auto update click OK it's going to wrap our block design inside the uh, SDL file now we can generate BT stream without any trouble click OK